Hello, this is part two of my deep dive into the inner workings of the Moog Subharmonicon. In this video, I will try to recreate this with this. The idea is to try to learn more about the Subharmonicon by recreating it using software that everybody has access to. VCV Rack is free. There'll be a link to it in the description if you don't already have it. The concepts, of course, are the same if you'd rather try to recreate a subharmonicon using hardware modules or even other software, and I'll be doing a video about that in the future anyway. In this video, I'm going to focus primarily on the envelope generators in the uh, Moog subharmonicon. They're fairly unique and a big part of the sound of the instrument. In the first video, I went through a lot of theory and demonstrated how you can create subharmonics a few different ways. If you haven't seen that video, I'll post a link to it as well in the description. If you already have a subharmonicon, this may help you learn more about it. If you don't have one, this series should help you put one together and experiment before running out and picking one up. The subharmonicon is truly a unique instrument that rewards time spent experimenting with absolutely unexpected and wonderful musical results. Well, I think that about covers it. I'll put an index in the description so you can easily navigate the topics. I'll let this demo play out a bit, then we'll get to it. First, let's take a quick look at envelope shapes. There are nine basic envelope shapes that are all based on three ramp shapes, linear or uniform, exponential or accelerating, and logarithmic or decelerating. So if we combine these three, we get our nine, linear, linear exponential, linear logarithmic, exponential linear, exponential, exponential logarithmic, logarithmic linear, logarithmic exponential, and of course logarithmic. Envelope shapes are absolutely key in synthesis and sound design. They are largely responsible for the character and expression of a musical tone. And since we use envelopes in pretty much every patch, it's a good idea to experiment and get to know these shapes. Okay, let's take a closer look at the envelope shapes of a Moog subharmonicon. I'm going to clock the subharmonicon with VCV so it's easier to compare later on. So VCV clock out to subharmonicon clock in. And I'm patching the trigger and VCA envelope out of the subharmonicon to a scope so we can take a closer look. Oh, by the way, the VCF envelope generator is identical to the VCF, so we only have to take a look at the one. Since the subharmonicon is clocked by VCV, I can start the sequence directly from the software. Okay, there we have it. We can clearly see the release or decay is accelerating, so it's an exponential release. Let's turn up attack so we can have a closer look. All right, the attack looks linear. That's different from most other Moog synths. Most of them use a slightly logarithmic attack. So the envelopes on a Moog subharmonicon are linear exponential. Okay, let's take a look at the trigger behavior. Let's start with a decay or release and bring that up. And as you can see, as I increase the decay time, the envelope does not have time to complete its full cycle before it's re-triggered, so it's not closing all the way. It allows the notes to ring through. And of course, the longer the decay, the less change in volume between triggers. Okay, let's try the same thing with the tack. I'll just bring decay down so it's um, easier to see. Um, there we go. Actually, less attack. Okay, it's definitely linear attack, super easy to see now. All right, see that? The envelope is not re-triggering until the attack stage is complete. So it's completing the attack and then falls and waits until the next trigger before restarting. So this can be used to get all kinds of different sounds. The envelope will not necessarily trigger with each sequence step or note change. So it's a cool way to get different articulations. Let's just experiment a little bit. All right, that is super cool and very versatile and also pretty unique. I don't think I have another envelope generator that will re-trigger after the attack stage. To sum up, the subharmonicon's envelopes are linear exponential and the attack stage must complete before the next envelope can be triggered. Okay, let's try this out in VCV. I've got a clock generator and a scope, obviously. 
and I've got some VCOs patched into a voltage-controlled mixer, which will be acting as our VCA for now. Mutable Stages is up there on the left. Uh, we'll get to that later. And I've got some of the Bog Audio AD envelopes I used in the last video as subharmonic generators. Uh, let's start with one of those. Okay, so I'm going to patch the uh, subharmonicons trigger into this envelope generator, out of the envelope into our VCA mixer, and into the scope. And let's see what we've got. All right, so we'll bring up the decay time, and the top trace is the VCV Bog Audio. And yeah, it looks uh, exponential as well, so that matches the subharmonicon below it. I'm going to try to turn up both attacks at the same time. We'll see if that works out. Okay, well, they're different, so it looks like we have a logarithmic attack from the Bog Audio envelope generator. See what happens if we switch it into linear mode. Yeah, so now we have linear attack, but if we turn up the decay... Yeah, and we're getting linear decay as well, so that doesn't match the uh, subharmonicon. Oh well, that's too bad. Let's turn off linear mode. I think it sounded closer before. So have a close listen to the sound of the two different envelope shapes. Uh, let's check out the uh, trigger behavior anyway. We learned in the last video that this module can turn on and off retrigger mode, so let's see how it behaves and compare it to the Moog. Okay, so we'll start with the tack, and I'm going to try to turn them both up at the same time again. Okay, I'll try to get them close to the same time. Uh, Moog's a bit slower. There we go. Okay, although the shape is different, they both have the same trigger behavior, at least with the tack. And with longer attack times, the sound of the different envelope shapes is really apparent. Yeah, okay, with the shape differences, I don't think this envelope's going to be my choice to recreate a uh, Moog subharmonicon. But uh, let's check out the trigger behavior of Decay anyway. Bring them both up at the same time. Okay, yeah, behavior is different. You can see the subharmonicon is being re-triggered like we discovered, but the Bog Audio is not re-triggering until the fall completes. So, it's disqualified. Okay, we've got stages up there on the left there. It's going to be part of the patch in the next video. So let's see if it does any better. I'm not going to go into too much detail about stages. It's not the most intuitive module, although it's one of my favorites. I own two of them. But I would like you to understand what I'm doing, so we'll do a quick summary. Basically, with stages, you can build different function generators by combining different types of stages. We're going to use a ramp stage. Stage types are selected by pushing the little button on top of the slider. Ramp stages are indicated by a green LED. Ramp stages go from one voltage to another in a CV-controlled amount of time with an adjustable curve. They are the building block used for attack, decay, or release segments in envelopes and LFOs. When in ramp mode, the trim pot controls the shape of the ramp and the slider controls the time of the ramp cycle, which is CV-controllable. Like I said, stages can be a bit of a pain to patch if you don't know how to work it. It patches from left to right. An AR envelope, for instance, will require two stages, one for attack and one for release. We'll use stages one and two because I've already got stages three through six patched, and we'll be using them in the next video, which will deal with the uh, polyrhythm generators and sequencers on the subharmonicon. Anyway, like I said, we need two stages for an AR envelope. Stages are automatically linked from left to right if something is patched into the gate input. Another gate input will break the normal connection. Okay, so I'm going to patch gate out of stages, stage 1, which is the entire envelope cycle, gate 2 would just be the decay stage, into the scope and into our VCA. And trigger into the gate input of channel 1, bring down attack, let's start it up. Okay, you can see we have a linear decay, but we can change that with this trim pot here. To the left we'll get logarithmic, and if we turn it to the right, yep, exponential. So we can compare that to the subharmonicon, which is below it on the scope, and it looks like we're pretty close. Actually, this is a good opportunity to compare the different uh, wave shapes, so let's just solo VCV. Here's our exponential. Nice and punchy. Linear. And logarithmic. Cool. Okay, let's tighten those up a little bit, and then we'll um, check out attack. 
Just love the sound of exponential release. It really gets a nice punchy sound. Okay, so I'm going to raise attack uh, simultaneously here. Okay, I'll try to get the attack time so they're similar. We're getting linear attack. Well, we've obviously got control over our attack shape anyway, so that's no surprise. This is VCV only. And the Moog. They're in different octaves, so it's clear which synth is doing what, but even with that, they sound pretty close. So let's check out trigger behavior, starting with decay. We'll just turn it up. And yeah, we're looking good. Both envelopes are behaving pretty much identically. That's great. No re-trigger on decay. So stages is a candidate. Okay, let's check out attack. Looking good so far. Oh, no, fail. Yeah, you can see stages is re-triggering. So that's no good. Stages is going to be ruled out for this patch. Although, just so you know, there is a firmware update for the hardware, which allows for re-trigger uh, behavior changes. But since we're using software, we're going to have to take a look at another envelope generator. This one just won't work. So I went through a ton of envelope generators in VCV. I think I went through them all, at least all the free ones, and none of them were able to get both the envelope shape or the trigger behavior. So I'm settling in on Rampage by Bifacto. Like Stages, Rampage is a SLU or ramp generator with shape control. It's a dual channel module and has a few extra bells and whistles that I won't get into for now. But most importantly, there are both inputs for CV or audio and trigger inputs. Rampage is obviously very similar to Make Noise Maths. You can see that just by looking at it. So if you're following along with hardware, Maths would be a good substitute, or maybe it's the other way around. Rampage a substitute for maths. Okay, same setup we've been doing. I'm just going to take the uh, subharmonicon trigger and plug that into the trigger input of channel A of the um, Rampage, out of channel A into our scope and VCA. And let's start it up. I'm going to mute the subharmonicon for now because we already know what we're after. So let's start by checking the trigger behavior of attack. Let's bring it up. And looking good. It's not re-triggering on attack. And it's linear. Perfect. And just like the subharmonicon, the attack time can be pretty long. Okay, let's try out the decay. We'll just bring rise down. And bring up the fall or decay. And perfect. It's not re-triggering, so it's behaving exactly like the subharmonicon um, envelope generator. Although it is linear, not exponential. So um, let's bring the rise and fall to pretty much equal times. So we can see the linear envelope clearly. There we go. Looks like a triangle, obviously. And we can adjust the shape with the um, shape knob right on the top here. So if we go to the right, we're supposed to get exponential. And yeah, we're getting an exponential fall, but a logarithmic rise. Really no surprise, it's the little drawing on the shape knob there. So it does have the behavior we want, which is probably the most important thing, but the shape is not the same. So let's see if we can fix that. I'm going to move the outputs to channel B, and uh, I'll just bring the uh, fall down, and I'm going to patch out of channel A into the audio input or CV input for channel B, not the trigger input. So theoretically, we should now have shape control over both fall and rise. So fall will be controlled by channel B. And let's dial it into exponential. And let's double check our trigger behavior. So let's bring up the fall a bit higher. Yep, it's still re-triggering with each trigger. So it's not re-triggering on the fall. So that's working. Okay, let's check out rise. Okay bring down fall a bit so we can take a closer look and it's linear so we've got the right shape and the right behavior finally okay so let's compare our bifacto envelope to our subharmonicon envelope so far so good okay let's experiment with our fall or decay times 
And look at that, perfectly in sync, working exactly the same. Looks like the subharmonicon envelope can go a little tiny bit longer, but close enough. Okay, let's check out Rise and Attack. Okay, I'll try to get them to stick to the same time, but this is a bit tricky. So far, so good. Well, the behavior's working, it's just trying to get them in time is tricky. Okay, that's good. We did it. We duplicated the behavior and shape of a Moog subharmonicon's envelope. Hooray! Yeah, the knob positions don't sync very well, but I'd be surprised if they did. Important thing is, we're getting the right shape or sound and behavior. Okay, before we put our patch together, I'm going to show you one more trick that will work as well. Let's get rid of Bafaco for a moment. Uh, mute that. And we're going to use our BOG Audio Envelope Generator for this example. And I'm going to grab a SLU Generator. Okay, I'm going to patch trigger input of the subharmonicon into the envelope, output of the envelope into our SLU Generator, which will go into our scope and our VCA, of course. There it is. And uh, unmute the uh, mixer. Okay. Going to bring the attack all the way down and the decay all the way down. And same thing on the uh, slew limiter. So just like our setup on the um, rampage, uh, the fall on the slew limiter is now controlling the fall of our envelope. And now we can use slew to dial in an exponential decay. And there it is. Cool. And we could get logarithmic or any shape we wanted using our slew limiter. But most importantly, this will solve our retrigger issue because the trigger is still going to be coming from the envelope generator. So that's great. Now, if we check out attack, we're getting logarithmic at the moment, but we're getting the behavior we want. We learned earlier, though, if we want to solve the logarithmic attack, we just hit our linear button on this module. And there we go. The correct behavior as well as shape using an envelope generator and a slew limiter. Wonderful. Okay, we did it. Time to put our patch together. Okay, so I've loaded up the patch we did in our last video with our makeshift subharmonic generators. You can check out that video for a thorough explanation of how we did that. So let's add the modules we need for our envelope generators. I'm going to add a scope so we can see what's happening. I'll use the BOG audio envelopes and SLU limiters because I think that's a little more elegant than the BeFacto, but really it's the same deal. And I'll add in a delay that we'll use later. That's just because the subharmonicon sounds awesome with delay. To start, I initialize the attack and decay of both envelopes and slew limiters, and I set the shape of our slew limiters to exponential for our fall. Oh, before we patch up, I'm going to show you the uh, fall retrigger behavior that we get from an envelope and a slew limiter. I didn't demonstrate it, I just mentioned it, so I'll just show it here. So patching a trigger out into our envelope, just like we did in the last example, and into our scope so we can compare. Okay, we'll start with the tack, which I can't remember if I showed you, but yes, it's still following the correct behavior. Now again, if we use the decay on the envelope generator with retrigger off, it must finish its cycle for both attack and decay. But if we keep the decay at zero on the envelope generator and use the slew limiter to control the fall time, then the envelope will still retrigger according to the attack value set on the envelope generator. And of course, decay is controlled or slewed by the slew generator. So there, cool. Just wanted to show you how that works. Okay, so let's patch the other envelope and slew limiter up the same way, but this one will uh, modulate the filter. And I'll plug it into the scope just for kicks. And again, the real subharmonicon is going to be used for a trigger. We'll talk about the sequencer and polyrhythm generator next time. And I'll patch the subharmonicon's envelope into the top channel of the scope. Patch one of the outputs of the VCA into our delay here. I'll keep it dry and won't use the delay until after we've compared the hardware and software. Okay, let's start with the real subharmonicon. Let's see what we got here for sequence. There's sequence one and oscillator one. Let's bring in oscillator 2 with sequencer 2. 
That's a good start. We'll go with that. While we compare, I'll keep the subharmonicon panned left and VCV panned right. And I'm going to take these sequence one and two outs of the subharmonicon and using my DC coupled interface, plug those into the software VCOs. And uh, let's see if they're in tune still from last patch. Bring up oscillator one. Yep, that's in tune and it's tracking pretty well. Let's try oscillator two. And bring it up in VCV. Yep. Yeah, it sounds a little out of tune, but I'm not going to mess with it. It's good enough for now. So far, sounds pretty good. Pretty close, left and right sides. Now let's mess around with our envelopes a bit. Yeah, that sounds really good. It does make me want two subharmonicons, but I guess that's the point of this whole video. Let's compare. Here's the Moog. And VCV. Okay, let's compare um, longer attacks. Try to get them as close as I can, and then I'll solo them again. Nice. They both behave the same sort of way. We can get those neat envelope polyrhythms. Oscillators sound a little different, but um, I'm happy. So let's patch in our delay, mute the subharmonicon, and mess around with our new VCV subharmonicon. Oh, I haven't tried the uh, filter envelopes out at all. So let's get those working. Oh, yeah, that sounds great. Cool, and just like a real subharmonicon, we're going to get the best musical results by just experimenting and exploring. Okay, let's add in some subharmonics. Spooky. That one sounds good. Okay, um, anyway, I think that about does it for this video. So, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something about envelope generators and the subharmonicon itself. I'm gonna wrap up our software subharmonicon in the next video when we'll talk about the polyrhythm generators and sequencers. So, by the end of the next one, we'll have a complete software based subharmonicon, which would be pretty cool. So again, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and just gonna mess around with my software subharmonicon for a while. Cheers.